Today we're looking at practical one of the 12 required practicals and we're going to be looking at the effect of temperature on the rate of reaction that is catalyzed by trypsin. Now what we've done first of all is we've taken our six test tubes as the instructions suggest and on three of them we've marked them with an X. And we've done that about halfway up the test tube. Now, earlier today, one of my students did this experiment and what she did was she used boiling tubes. And when she put the X on there, what of course she found was that the solution didn't quite reach the X. So she had to start again. So do make sure that you've got test tubes. But hey, it's a brilliant mistake because it's the kind of thing that in your lab book, you're gonna be recording down. These are the little things that you found along the way. So in each of these, I've literally made my 3% solution and I've put them in there. But one of the things that we discussed today was what do we mean by a 3% solution? Well, you may think it means three grams of the milk powder in 100 mils of water. However, what we took it to mean is three mils of the milk powder made up using its instructions. And then when we've got our milk solution that's made from the powder, we take three mils of this and we add it to 97 mils of water and that gives us a 3% solution which looks very different. This one's much thicker and much creamier and this one, although it's opaque, you can still uh, see that you can't see through it and that to us made sense so that's what we read as the three percent solution however again perfect we don't quite know you try different things and you rationalize them in your lab book and it's evidence of thought it's evidence that you've done the practical so as i've mentioned i filled those up what i now need to do is fill these test tubes up with two cubic centimetres of trypsin and two cubic centimetres of the pH 7 solution buffer. I need my safety glasses on now because uh, we're messing around with enzymes and as we know you only need a small amount of enzyme and it acts for a very long time so the last thing that you want is for it to go in your eye and start digesting your eye. I'm going to decant the enzyme into my beaker and I'm going to use my um, syringe, clean syringe, so there's no cross-contamination, and I'm just gonna remove two cubic centimeters and pop it into each of those test tubes, like so. I'm gonna pour that back in. I'm confident I can pour that back in because it's uh, a clean beaker. And, <clears throat> For the buffer, I've got my pH 7 buffer. Again, I've decanted it into a beaker and I'm gonna use a clean syringe and I'm gonna extract two cubic centimeters and put them in each of the test tubes. So at the moment, my milk solution and my enzyme in, and the buffer are not mixed. I'm gonna put them in a hot water bath at 20 degrees and wait until they get to that temperature before I mix them because obviously changing the temperature or having a temperature difference would add another variable and it would give us an incorrect result. Okay, so here we are at the water bath. I'm gonna take the lid off and I am going to just place the whole test tube inside, test tube rack, inside there like so um it feels about the right temperature and when i actually look on the scale i can see that there's something different going on now the temperature is actually 45 degrees when i measure it with a thermometer but on the scale here it says it's at about 55 degrees and the reason why is because it's been calibrated over time these water baths lose the ability to hold it at the desired temperature according to this thermostat and so what the technicians have done is they've calibrated it and here we go if you look on here 
it tells me that if I set it to, for instance, 60 degrees, I'm going to get 53.3. If I set it to 50 degrees, I'm going to get 44.6. And so this is what we, this is what calibration means. We're realigning what it says on the dial with what it actually should be. And so again, if you can include this kind of detail in your lab book, it shows a level of understanding of calibration as well as the need to um, have the um, reactants at the correct temperature. And don't forget to actually check that the temperature in, of the water is the same as what you want uh, by using a thermometer. Don't just stick your hand in or assume because you'll waste time. Okay, so as per the instructions, I've just mixed my uh, two test tubes together. So I've got my enzyme and I've got my buffer solution and I've got my milk solution. As you can see, it's brimming. It's really right to the top and that's never good to have it right to the top. So again, it's a consideration before the start of the experiment. Is your full quantity of solution going to fit in the test tube? And mine clearly hasn't. Uh, so what I'm going to do is transfer it to a larger test tube. But of course, before I do that, I need to mark it with the X. Now I've marked those with an X. And as you can see, it's a different X from what we had before. Now this is an important point. I've actually used a different pen. And if you were going to share results with the rest of your class, then that's one thing you should consider is using the same pen. So you've got the same thickness of line and you've got the same depth of color for your cross. So I'm just pouring that into there, making sure that it covers my cross and it does. And I'll repeat that with the others. Mm, this one only just so again it's a real consideration I've now adjusted my crosses and moved them further down the tube so when I add them the cross is completely covered by my solution I have just gone to change the cross on the first one that I did to make it lower down so that they're all the same and um, what I'm finding is it's very difficult to put your cross on a wet tube so better if you do them all at the same time all when they're dry I'm gonna have to take this and dry it okay so I've drawn my table on the board and here are my column headings and remember your column headings can't be too long but they can very easily be too short and I've kept my units in the, in the column heading and not in the actual column itself. And I've got my um, full title here. Of course, what I have missed out is the three repeats that I'm doing for each temperature. Remember that repeats make your experiment more reliable because you can identify anomalies and you can then discard them. By discarding them, they then don't affect your mean and you should get a much better graph, a much better set of anticipated results. Okay, so I've now adjusted my time, my table to incorporate the different trials and I've incorporated a column at the end titled mean. Okay, so in this experiment, what we've found is there's been loads of little things that have gone wrong, but all of them are great because it gives us something to write about in our lab book to show that we've actually done the practical. Because without doing the practical, all these little things wouldn't have gone wrong. So, for example, a 3% milk powder solution, what does that mean? Uh, you know, we looked at, is it 3 grams in 100 mils? Is it 3 mils of the actual made-up powder solution in 97 mils? All of these things are things that you could talk about. The calibration aspect, using a thermometer to check the water bath and not taking it for granted that it's at the right temperature. Um, placing the X halfway up the tube, but making sure that the tube actually accommodates all the liquid solution that you want to work with. So lots and lots for you to write about. And of course, all these things you wouldn't think to write about unless you did the practical. And this is what proves you did the practical.